This is a brief tutorial on model predictive control. What we're talking about with model predictive control has uh, typically been used you know, in the chemical refining uh, business, distillation columns uh, for many years. And it's beginning to be applied on things like unmanned aerial vehicles and biomedical applications, man, uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing, and advanced uh, manufacturing. Um, so many different cases of model predictive control becoming more popular. So I'm going to give a, a quick overview and also go through a couple tutorials on model predictive control. Uh, when we talk about model predictive control, we're talking about um, using explicit dynamic model. Okay, so there's a dynamic model of the response of the process variables, the outputs, to changes in the manipulated variables. So we have some inputs um, and a process and outputs. And we have some sort of a process model, whether that be differential equations, an empirical model, but some dynamic model that relates the inputs to the outputs. And what we're doing is trying to compute control moves that are intended to force this output along a particular trajectory. Okay, so let's say this is the desired trajectory, and without doing anything, this might be my response. But giving this to a model predictive controller, it tries to drive it to this trajectory here, uh, to follow that pre-specified trajectory. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, is um, a lot of times uh, just define our objective function. Okay, our objective is just the summation um, i equals one to n. This might be the number of, of steps in the horizon uh, going off into the future. And what we're going to do is try to uh, be able to, to match our response y to some trajectory. Uh, I just put that as y trajectory. And, and a lot of times uh, popular uh, objective function is just do a sum of squared errors. Um, now, the, the beginning applications of MPC had linear models, but there's many different types of models. So these can be these can be linear, empirical. Um, they can be first principles. I uh, know those are generally nonlinear. Okay, or it can be a combination of the two, and those would be something like hybrid. Uh, hybrid models. Okay, what we want to do with these these uh, controllers is to reject unmeasured uh, disturbances, things that affect the process and drive it away from that target, and also be able to treat multivariable control, also be able to include maybe some information about feed forward. Let's say it's going to be raining. Uh, we might be able to uh, take that information into account in a distillation column and proactively correct for it. Okay, so uh, why should model predictive control be used versus you know standard PID controller? Uh, a couple cases where where it really benefits are in long you know processes with long time constants, uh, you know delays, uh, inverse response. That's just for for uh, single input, single output. Um, also, you know if you have multiple manipulated variables and controlled variables that all affect one another, model predictive controller can take those into account. Whereas you know, a PID controller, you may have to have some sort of feed forward mechanism and information sharing between the controllers. So model predictive controller, uh, that does that naturally. You're able to get some of those interactions and exploit that information in the controller. Um, also, you know, if you have constraints on the limits, um, you know, either for manipulated variables, let's say a valve that can only go between zero and 100% open, or a pump, you know, the flow rate, or also for constraints, you may have upper and uh, lower limits on that and, and want that variable to stay within those limits instead of necessarily driving to a target. Okay, so here's an MPC overview. It's just a, a simple schematic taken from Wikipedia. You have your manipulated variables and typically you, you uh, make discrete decision points into the future, uh, you know, where that manipulated variable is going to be. Um, and, uh, and, and then you also have a process, okay, so these are your measurements right here. Okay, those were, those were your measurements that came from your process variable that you're trying to drive to a target. So let's say this is, for example, a temperature, okay? So you want it to follow this temperature profile in getting up to a target value uh, for that, that temperature. And uh, this might be a, um, a flow rate on a cooling, uh, you know, on a jacket react on the jacket of a, a reactor. 
Um, and so you're adjusting this in order to be able to drive this closer to the target and, and considering all of these points into the future, okay, to try to align that. And that's where our sum of squared errors came from, you know, y minus y trajectory. Um, and you might have a squared error. Okay, so you're going to be, these are going to be a degrees of freedom that you can adjust or that the optimizer can adjust in order to be able to drive you uh, to your target. Okay, so uh, we have targets um, that may be coming, you know, those may be changing as well. Um, that might be coming from another application that's optimizing maybe the whole plant or, or the, you know, coordinating between multiple controllers. Um, and, uh, you know, with the, um, uh, the important thing with model predictive control is going to handle multiple inputs and multiple outputs or MIMO control problems. Okay, and then we can also include equality and inequality constraints on the control to manipulated variables. Uh, so it's a constrained uh, optimization environment. Uh, you know, many packages have uh, the ability to solve linear or nonlinear programming problems at each sampling instance. Um, and then uh, we're also able to, to estimate disturbances. If we can do that better, it's kind of like a feed forward. We're able to take that into account. Okay, and then the important thing with MPC is that we're just taking the first move out of the uh, total calculated moves. So what we're doing is just taking this move right here, and that will actually be implemented uh, in the process. Now the next time step, everything shifts over by one, and then you recalculate your moves based on this, this new measurement that might arrive at this time point, and then you would implement this move. Okay, and that would be implemented, everything else thrown away, um, and then it would cycle again at the next sampling period. Okay, so now we have just a single input, single output process. So what I'm going to do is switch over now to a, um, let me go ahead and uh, switch over to a website where we have some of this information. If you just come to the apmonitor.com website, um, here is the, the address here for, for these exercises. And what we're going to do is go ahead and download. Uh, we're going to download this Excel file right here. Um, you know, just doing these calculations in Excel. So what I'm going to do is uh, once I download that and extract it, um, open up the Excel file, and uh, what you'll see is just a very simple interface here that shows a manipulated variable, a model, and then also a desired target. So this is our desired target. Okay, the black line, that's where we want to drive our process response. And we also have a red line here, and that's that's gonna be the process model. So if we if we have this sequence of moves given by the green, that's gonna be our response. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and just change that. Okay, so I'm gonna add this is these are the delta moves at every time point. Okay, so I just added uh, one to my delta right at a uh, time of three. And then you can see how my process um, actual target changed. Okay, so what I can do is, um, you know, kind of do this manually if I wanted to. Let's say I say, well, it needs to go just a little bit faster right here. Let me go ahead and enter one in here and it, it shifts that up. I said, well, I'm, I might have gone too far with that move of three down here. Let me take that away. Okay, so it's going to adjust that, um, you know, the, the actual model prediction, okay, and, uh, and, and be able to um, you know, use these degrees of freedom that are shown by the green line. And the solver will typically do this. It's typically not done manually. Okay, so one of the other things that we can do is uh, use a solver um, to be able to um, solve this. And so let me, uh, let's see if I've, I've got the solver on here. I don't think I have this one installed. Let me let me just check and see if okay. Um, looks like no solver right here. But but if you have Excel solver, uh, one of the things that you can do is uh, is go ahead and um, minimize the sum of squared errors um, or the sum of absolute errors uh, by adjusting and then adjusting these manipulated variable uh, moves right here to be able to get those to align. Okay, um, so so I'm going to go ahead and just um, minimize Excel. Okay, and then let me go back to the PowerPoint. Um, okay, and 
I'm going to go pick up uh, where we left off here. Um, one of the other things that we can do with model predictive control, that Excel example was just a single input, single output system. Um, but for well, one of the advantages of model predictive control is that you can consider a multiple input, multiple output um, systems. Okay, so for example, this might be the heat uh, that we apply in a, in a distillation column. Uh, we might have a reflux ratio and then a feed. And then this is our, these are our outputs. Okay, so these uh, are the controlled variables. Okay, these are the controlled variables, the things that I'm trying to drive to a target. And then these are the inputs, okay, the manipulated um, the manipulated variables. Um, okay, so manipulated variables on uh, on this side, controlled variables on this side. So if I do a step in my heat, the overhead composition is going to increase. The delta P is going to increase. Low, uh, lower temperature is going to increase, and the bottom's composition is going to decrease. Okay, so reflux ratio as well. If I take a step up in that, you can see a uh, reflux. Uh, the overhead composition goes down, and then you can see the other, these other responses. Okay, so here I have three inputs and four outputs. Now I want to be able to use that model, let's say to be able to control this distillation column example. If I have a PID controller, I might have to pair, for example, one manipulated variable with one controlled variable. But in MPC, you can have different number of MVs than uh, CVs and still be able to control that system. Okay, the other thing that I'll mention with this is that you may have uh, different trajectories. Now we showed in that, in that previous one that just a single trajectory and we are trying to, for example, uh, you know, make it up to this new set point. In this case right here, um, let me go ahead and change the, the color here of the ink. Um, you know, so so this might have been the trajectory that we wanted to follow. You can also have a dead band here. Okay, so that's just a pure dead band. You say, well, I wanted to get it up to this dead band as fast as as fast as possible. Okay, and then stay within that dead band. Uh, you may also have somewhat of a funnel here. Okay, as it, as it comes up. So you say, I really don't care where it goes in the near term, as long as it comes to a final steady state range. Okay, and then also uh, another popular one are reference trajectories. So here's uh, somewhat of a dead band here, and um, you know as long as I stay within that that red dead band or the the reference trajectory, then I say oh, I'm doing a good job, um, or the controller's doing a good job. Okay, so with this, uh, by adjusting these different trajectories, you can control you know the final target range. You know, make that as narrow. Uh, or as wide as, as necessary. You can also control the response or the response speed. Okay, so how fast you come up to the new set point, as in as in that one. Well, and then also you can prioritize the near term versus long term um, objectives. Okay, so that one the funnel has you know it says don't don't be concerned about any of the near term uh, dynamics. Just get me to my final steady state versus the reference trajectory in the red that says we'll try to follow this trajectory coming up to the new set point. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and just open up a um, an example MATLAB script. I'll just come back to the website and just and just show that you can you can download this. This is a MATLAB toolbox for model predictive control. And if you visit this, it'll take you to the uh, MATLAB central. Now this is a, uh, a file exchange site, okay? So you can just go ahead and download uh, download the, the files here and then be able to run this uh, tutorial exercise. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, let me just go back. Um, okay, so there are three files that are contained in this trajectory that you wanna run, apm1.lti, and that'll be able to translate a model um, into what is called the uh, the APM format. Okay, so this is a text file representation of, of your model, and then uh, we'll we'll show some control calculations as well. Okay, so let me come back here to MATLAB. Okay, so I've I've extracted um, I've extracted these files in this folder. 
Okay, so here's the first one that we want to uh, work with. Let me go ahead and open that, um, open up this file. So what I've done is, uh, you know, this is just a two input, two output system. Okay, so I have uh, just in the little plus domain, I define these transfer functions. Um, and uh, and then I basically put these into into an overall transfer function, a MIMO transfer function, two inputs, two outputs. And then I'm going to uh, plot the step response, uh, convert it to a discrete form. Okay, so that's the C, C2D function here with one sen, uh, second sampling. And then also plot that step response. And, uh, and then I'm going to convert it into the AP Monitor modeling language format. Okay, and then be done with, uh, with this script. Okay, so let me go ahead and just run this. Uh, hitting F5 or the, the run button and then we'll see uh, what this model comes up with okay and if I come back up here to the top again these are the models that that I had so G11 was the, res the relationship between my first input and my first output okay so that had uh, you know a delay of about six seconds and then you can see the response the red line here on this plot that is the uh, discrete model versus the, uh, the blue line, that's the uh, continuous model form. Okay, so there I have my model and it's been translated into, uh, actually let me I open up the wrong file there. Um, okay, so if I come back here to lti.apm, this is the model that it translated into AP monitor modeling language format. Okay, now I'm going to run this, uh, the, the control calculation. Okay, and uh, this is going to use that same model. Um, it'll go ahead and load it in uh, right down here in the, A the APM file and then uh, solve this for model predictive control. So this is two inputs, two outputs uh, run through MATLAB. And let me go ahead and just open up uh, the results here um, on the operator interface. Okay, so this pops up at the end and then I can see that I'm trying to control this uh, this controlled variable to this target. Now there's a little bit of a delay here. Okay, now this is listed in minutes, but you can see that it tries to make it up to this uh, reference trajectory right here. And uh, in order to do that, it had to adjust the first input in this way. Okay, so the, the first input came up, down, and then steadied out. And then here's the second input as well. Now this one had just a little bit more complicated scheme. It was trying to control both of these outputs. Let me go to Y2. We already saw the value for Y1. Okay, so we had Y1 and Y2 that are being controlled to these uh, reference trajectories by manipulating uh, U1 and U2. Okay, so that's the, uh, the example in, in MATLAB. And uh, that concludes uh, the tutorial on uh, model predictive control. And uh, like I said, come back here to this uh, website for additional videos and information about MPC and, uh, and tutorial information on, uh, on model predictive control and uh, ways to implement that.